The movie begins with a quick scene from 8000 BC somewhere in the North African desert. As a local tribe sleeps in the dead of night, a giant spaceship lands nearby blowing away all the rudimentary hay huts. While everyone else runs away in fear and confusion, a young man curiously makes his way up a small hillock to see what's the commotion about. Suddenly, a blindingly bright light descends from the spaceship right on the man and engulfs the young man. The scene shifts to Giza, Egypt in 1928 ad where archaeologist Professor Paul Langford and his daughter Catherine are making their way into an excavation site near the Great Pyramids. Among the helter and skelter, they discover a large round cover stone, a kind of stone used as the final piece in masonry works, marked with hieroglyphs. Meanwhile, young Catherine sees a beautiful brass locket with the Eye of Ra inscribed on it and takes it with herself when her father calls her. Nearby they see several excavation workers pull up a round metal ring marked with all kinds of symbols and of unknown purpose. The scene shifts once again to present day, 1994, where a much older Catherine travels to find Egyptologist and linguist Daniel Jackson who is giving a presentation on the fourth dynasty of Egypt. Catherine sees Daniel express his doubts on whether the pharaohs built the pyramids. However, his audience made up of traditional Egypt experts laugh at his suggestions and leave before the session ends. Catherine, who is still wearing the locket she picked up all these years ago offers a recently evicted and increasingly alienated Daniel a shot at putting his life together by inviting him to translate hieroglyphs. In the following scene, we see two US Air Force officers arrive at the home of retired Colonel Jack O'Neill in a tragic incident. His son had accidentally shot himself with Jack's pistol because of which he fell into depression and his marriage became strained. The two officers notify O'Neill that he has been reactivated in his duty on the order of General West. We then are transported to a secret military installation in Creek Mountain, Colorado where Jackson meets other scientists working on the mystery of the giant cover stone. Awed by the size and mystery of the cover stone, he is informed that the cover stone has two parts, the inner part with hieroglyphs that they have already translated and the outer part which is marked with symbols yet to be decoded. Jackson quickly corrects the translation that the other scientists have done and the reveals that it refers to something called the Stargate. However, the team of scientists is interrupted by Colonel Jack O'Neill who informs them that the information now falls under US Air Force classified project and will be overlooked by him. Within 14 days, Jackson decodes the unknown symbols. He finds out that the markings on the outer track are actually star constellations placed in an order forming a map. These constellations form the six-point coordinates that marks a destination point in space. He then reveals that the seventh symbol, two humans praying on either side of a pyramid upon whose head the sun is directly pointing symbolizes the origination point. With Colonel O'Neill's permission, he is then shown the Stargate, the metal ring that was found in Giza in 1928. A team consisting of scientists and military personnel then align the coordinates that Jackson provides them with the markings in the inner rotating track of the Stargate. As soon as the seventh coordinate is aligned, a wormhole opens in the Stargate with tremendous ferocity. The military then sends in a remote controlled probe to examine the wormhole but it gets pulled in and gets sent to a distant planet in a faraway Kelium galaxy. With data sent by the probe, the scientists deduct that the planet's atmosphere is exactly like that of Earth. The full picture is now clear. The Stargate here on Earth is one door in a two-door pathway, and the other door is placed in some faraway planet across the universe. The symbols that Jackson decoded were the keys to the door. However, Colonel Jack O'Neill suggests that they might have to abandon exploring this intergalactic Stargate because they wouldn't know the codes to open the door on the other side when they want to return. Jackson jumps into the conversation and says that he can help with that, and despite Colonel O'Neill's reservations, General West invites Jackson and the team to explore the Stargate. The next day, Catherine gives Jackson the necklace with the Eye of Ra before he joins a team of seven army men, O'Neill, Riley, Poro, Freeman, Brown, Ferretti, and Kowalski to explore where the Stargate takes them. After a dizzying and fast-paced travel, they reach the planet on the other side. Quickly scanning their surrounding, they realize that they emerged within a Great Pyramid which is the exact copy of the Great Pyramid of Giza and is situated in a desert. The enigmatic Colonel Jack O'Neill orders Jackson to prepare to open the Stargate of this side, but since there is no huge cover stone which has the symbols, unlike back at Earth, Jackson says that they would need to look around. So Colonel Jack O'Neill orders his men to set up camp near the pyramid. A little later, Jackson who is sitting away from the group, sees a large camel-like animal with a harness attached, chomping at a lonely bush. He approaches it but is dragged away accidentally, 
when the animal feels threatened seeing other members with guns. O'Neill, Kowalski, and Brown chase after him across the desert. A while after, the animal stops into the surprise of Colonel O'Neill. They discover some kind of a mine in a distant where humans are laboring. He discovers that the miners have seen them and hence calls to the remaining soldiers at the pyramid to secure it as they might be caught here for a while. As they approach, the large group of miners are stunned to silence seeing humans like them but with completely different attire. However, on seeing the amulet with the Eye of Ra that Jackson is wearing, they think that the earthlings are emissaries of the god and bow down to them. Meanwhile, Brown investigates the mineral they are mining and finds out that it is quartz. Soon the chieftain of the tribe, Kassif arrives on his camel-like animal. Jackson realizes that they are conversing in some ancient form of Egyptian, but cannot understand it. He offers them a kind of liquid, and in return, Jackson offers them a chocolate bar which the chieftain absolutely loves and invites them into his city. Jackson insists that this is the chance to look for the symbols that would open the Stargate, and Brown adds that the readings suggest that the mineral they are mining here is the same mineral that is used in making the Stargate. In response, Colonel O'Neill radios the remaining soldiers at the pyramid and tells them to secure the area as they might be caught up here for a while. In the following scene, we see the long file of miners making their way across the desert to their village. Jackson is being treated as a deity by the villagers. Once they reach the village, Chaftan Kassif reveals to them a giant metal plate with the Eye of Ra, and everyone bows down. Jackson recognizes the symbol a D begins to ask about Ra. It can be seen that there is a real fear of the Egyptian sun god among the villagers. But before Jackson can inquire further, a horn blares from the top of the gate, and to the surprise of the earth people, all the villagers start running indoors. The massive main gate of the village is also closed, much to the annoyance of Colonel O'Neill. The colonel storms towards the gate, and Kowalski grabs a villager and points a gun at his head while Colonel fires several warning shots. The chieftain's teenage son Skara steps forward and asks Colonel to follow him up the gate which he suspiciously does. There he shows the Colonel an oncoming sandstorm because of which the village is being sealed. The communication with the base team is also choppy due to the storm, and the base team is forced to go inside the pyramid. That night, as the storm rages outside a party is hosted inside the gates of the village, and Daniel tries some weird looking animal, which fortunately tastes like chicken, urged by the Colonel. He then goes to Kassif and tries to ask him about the Eye of Ra by drawing the symbol on sand. However, as soon as he begins scrabbling, Kassif quickly erases it with his leg and Jackson realizes that writing is forbidden here. Jackson is then mobbed by a group of old ladies that take him to a room and scrub off his hands and feet clean. Soon after, Kassif offers his daughter Shairi to Jackson who initially declines it but seeing how it may be taken as an insult to her, he pretends to accept her. Slowly, he begins to communicate with her through symbols that he draws on sand which he initially thinks she wouldn't be comfortable with. However, Shairi then draws the same, a circle over the pyramid symbol that he saw on the Stargate, and he asks her to show it to him. Meanwhile at the base camp in the pyramid, the Ferretti, Freeman, Poro, and Riley are getting impatient waiting for the others. They cannot turn the Stargate on by themselves because there may be infinite number of combinations, which may send them to any random planet. Hence, they are stuck here. Suddenly, with a massive quake and sound, the ship of Ra lands on the pyramid. Before the soldiers can muster up any kind of defense, Poro and Riley are killed while Ferretti and Freeman are captured. On the other hand in the village, Colonel Jack O'Neill is slowly making bonds with the tribesmen. He gifts Skara the lighter who is absolutely fascinated by it. But when the young boy reaches out for his gun, O'Neill uncharacteristically lashes out at him, perhaps haunted by the memory of his dead son. In the meantime, Shori takes Jackson down to the caves and shows him various symbols painted on the walls. By naming the symbols on the walls and matching it with the names that Shori gives them, Jackson slowly starts to learn their language, step by step. When Colonel Jack O'Neill, Brown and Kowalski find him, he reveals the story that the symbols told him. Ra was once a part of an alien race whose home planet was dying and the species themselves were becoming extinct. Unable to prevent his bodily decay, Ra traveled across the universe until one day he stumbled across a planet teeming with life I, E, Earth. There, in 8000 BCE according to Earth's timescale, he possessed the body of a young man, as we saw in the very first scene of the movie. With his advanced technology, Ra was able to subjugate the people in ancient Egypt. To maintain the constant supply of the mineral that fueled his technology, and prevented him from dying. Ra transported humans from Earth to Abydos to work in the mines. However, the ancient Egyptians protested against him and managed to overthrow his overseers and ultimately burying the space gate, never to be found out. 
To prevent this from happening at Abydos, Ra forbid reading and writing. While Jackson is explaining all this to Colonel O'Neill, Kowalski finds the cartage that contains the symbols to open the Stargate. However, when Jackson sees it, he finds that the portion that contains the seventh symbol has been worm out and illegible. At the same time, they cannot establish any kind of contact with the base team despite the radio signals working just fine, so they decide to go back to the pyramid. After a brief firefight with the overseers of Ra which results in Brown being killed, Colonel O'Neill and Jackson are held captive and taken to face Ra. Ra reveals his and his overseas humanoid form for the captives. He then proceeds to display the nuclear bomb that Colonel O'Neill brought with him in case of dire extremes. While everyone is distracted, Colonel grabs the gun from one of the overseers and shoots all the guards before pointing it at Ra. A moment of hesitation takes over the Colonel as Ra is surrounded by small kids. Taking advantage an overseer overpowers him and throws him in the jail. In a horrible turn of events, Jackson is killed in crossfire. Unbeknownst to them, a group of youngsters led by Skara has followed them to the pyramid and are observing all this. Ra then takes out his anger on the poor villagers by sending out his fighter jets and indiscriminately shooting and bombing the village which leaves several wounded and dead. This fuels a fire of rebellion among a group of tribesmen. Meanwhile at the pyramid, Ra puts the dead body of Jackson in a sarcophagus like chamber and brings him back to life. However, he is not doing this as a show of respect or love, but to make an example out of Jackson through a vicious punishment. The next he orders the tribesmen to gather around the pyramid where he forces Jackson to kill his other teammates. However, Jackson notices a group of the tribesmen led by Skara hiding guns that they got from the abandoned suitcases of earthlings. Suddenly, Jackson turns around and shoots a beam at the ground raising dust and giving enough time for captives to run away. Sadly, Freeman is killed in the fire from Ra's overseers. The earthlings then find refuge in a cave along with the villagers, who are now in open rebellion against Ra. Jackson informs Colonel that his nuclear bomb will be sent to Earth through the Stargate along with a shipment of the minerals, which will make the explosion 100 times more destructive. Colonel admits that the plan was for everyone to return back while he would stay behind to detonate the bomb and completely wipe out any sign of danger on Abydos. Jackson urges the Colonel to not give up on his life that easily. Deep into the night, Skara is drawing a victory sign on the wall, and Jackson realizes that it is the seventh symbol as it is very similar to the seventh symbol of the Stargate at Earth. O'Neill and his surviving men join forces with Skara to overthrow the remaining overseers. Now free from their oppressors, they launch an attack on Ra, who orders his fighter ships to engage the humans while his own ship prepares to depart. The humans outside fight bravely but are eventually forced to surrender when they run out of ammunition. However, seeing their gods as they truly are, mere mortals, inspires the rest of the tribe to rebel against their guards. Shairi tragically loses her life in the conflict, but Jackson manages to smuggle her body aboard Ra's ship using a teleportation device. Left behind to face Ra's guard captain, Anubis, O'Neill engages in a fierce battle. Meanwhile, Jackson uses the regeneration device to bring Shairi back from the brink of death. Just as they are discovered by Ra, O'Neill activates the teleportation system, sending Anubis to his demise and allowing Jackson and Shairi to escape. With the heroes reunited, they teleport the bomb onto Ra's ship, destroying it and vanquishing the evil god. With their mission complete and the humans freed, the remaining team, O'Neill, Kowalski, and Faraday return to Earth. Jackson, however, chooses to stay behind with Shairi and start a new life with his newfound family.